Sunday's sports coverage takes us to one of the newest jewels on the NFL landscape, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the New Orleans Saints. Off the play fake to Peterson. Here's Breeze to throw. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Daniil Hunter in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Throwing on second down. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. I know one thing, Brandon. This was a very difficult defense to throw the ball against in 2016. What were they, third in the third. league in pass defense? Yeah, these receivers are going to have to be sharp with their routes in this one. Yeah, because they're going to show them a lot of change-ups in the secondary, and they have a good pass rush. On third and long, it's Breeze. Pressure gets to Breeze as he's taken down. Everson Griffin, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now the ninth-year man from LSU, Thomas Morstead, on to punt. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. Sherrills. Oh, oh. Still going. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And it'll be Viking football here as they take possession. And now out comes Minnesota. First carry for Latavius Murray. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. You and I both know that you don't really truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray's a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him. Upright with some power. They go back to Murray on first down. There he goes inside the 30. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. But last year, I'm not sure we saw very many of those runs, did we, from the Vikings? I mean, they had the poorest rushing attack in the league. Just 75 yards per game, but carries like the one we just saw that'll help bolster that average yeah certainly and they tried to beef up the offensive line in the offseason brought in Latavius Murray and then drafted Dalvin Cook out of Florida State on first down Murray and able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20 They're operating in the red zone. They'll try to throw now. Bradford floating one incomplete. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? Off the play fake, Bradford. He rifles one that's intercepted. 
Picked off by Von Bell. And he will take it out to the 25-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Awfully nice to see Adrian Peterson back and running well. Look, it was just 2015 when he won his last rushing title. Got hurt in 2016, and that season became a bit of a wash. Yeah, it did become. They're hoping to get back to that old form that you're alluding to, though. He does have three rushing titles, including that one you mentioned in 2015. Breeze to throw on second down. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. When you and I did the weekly commentary updates last year, it seemed like we always used to talk about Michael Thomas week after week. And it piled up. 92 catches on the season, but the thing that really struck me was doing a New Orleans game and talking with a few of his teammates who talked about how much the game meant to him and he was upset with guys he didn't think cared about the game enough. Unusual for a rookie, but it's a good sign for him. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there and swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. On second down, here's Breeze. And his throw is incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And now it's third down. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. A play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. And Gim's got it. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Give him 30 yards there. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make it a second down. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks. But it doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw completion. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So the offense has it first and ten. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down at the 18-yard line. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back, on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. On second down, Peterson. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll make it third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let them down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff them for a loss. And now some motion before the snap. Man, this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. Right. 
So a costly penalty and now a tougher third down situation. Shotgun now for Breeze. On the check down, he finds Kamara. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Give him nine on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And Lutz's kick is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And it'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Let's see what the defense dials up here. Third and four. To throw, Bradford. Over the middle, complete. It's Morgan. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. On first and 10, Bradford. He's got to complete to Stephon Diggs. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Bradford now to throw on first down. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. Bradford with a give to Murray. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
There hasn't been much to crow about when we talk about defenders in New Orleans in recent years, but Cameron Jordan certainly is a guy that we should respect. Is he what they will kind of build around on that line? Yeah, they have to because not only is he a good player out on the edge, he can work inside a little bit as well, but it's his leadership and his passion for the game that they'll really utilize. That was second down run for Murray. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On third down, Bradford. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. That tie tail with a big time sack on third down and it'll be a loss of seven you never want to give up a sack from the o-line's perspective they hate it for several reasons especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket oh no doubt they have a ton of pride and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean they want that uniform with no grass stains no dirt nothing on it but it's really really difficult you're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired, and if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting on field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. The Saints on third down. Just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. They'll run it. Here's Peterson. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And it's incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes it's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. And on second and ten now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He'll get this to the 40. Sweet little juke in there, got him some extra yardage. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. They run again with Peterson. And a big tackle there as the defender runs right through it, right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. 
So it's a seven-play drive, but it stalls out in the end. Let's credit the defensive front seven. They were a little leaky at the start of the drive, but they stiffen toward the end. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Let's field it a few yards into the end zone. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. Give him six on the play, and that'll make this a second down. draw play he gives to Murray and he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32 a three yard pickup on second and four now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard to the 33 good enough for a first down he needed a yard that's what he got and it's going to earn him a new set of downs we ought to come up with a t-shirt and sell it that says no indecision on third and one and we didn't see it on that run did we got his shoulders square just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up absolutely picked his lane went with it and converted Bradford going to give it to Murray the broken tackle, but couldn't create much space. Down just beyond the 35. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Second down, Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. I remember the first time I saw Dalvin Cook play in college. I was watching him on TV, called a scouting friend of mine and said, who is this guy? He's special. And he said, dude, you're watching a home run hitter on the field. Yeah, he was special in Tallahassee. Left Florida State, their all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. First down, Bradford. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Manti Teo. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. Just what you want on a first down run, call it eight yards, and it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Again, Peterson. And some big-time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. And the defensive line controls the offensive front the way we just saw there. It doesn't allow any of the offensive linemen to leak downfield and get to the linebackers and block them on the second level. 
you end up with the type of play we just saw. Linebackers didn't have to fight anyone off, didn't have to knock anyone to the side, didn't have to elude anyone trying to block them. They just saw the play, ran to the ball. And That's caught inside the 20. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. They chalk that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. So here we go, first and ten now. From the gun, it's Breeze. His throw caught at about the five. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. Breeze down a throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. Now, Breeze again. The quick slant caught. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Ginn, a five-yard touchdown. And the Saints now add six to their lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. The offense on third down, they've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and goal. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Lutz puts this one through. And that will make our score 9 to nothing. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. Not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though this offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team. Right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And for the third 
time here in this half. It's intercepted. Picked off by Ken Crawley. And he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. So that is three interceptions now in this first half. And you hate to ask the question, but yeah, let's be honest. We're thinking about it. Do you need to go in a different direction next series? Potentially. We know that he's probably not going to be on the Pro Bowl ballot. That's not really his stature here. But he has been their starting quarterback for this game. So they've got to weigh things about who's behind him. Do they think he can snap it back into gear? Maybe change up the play calling to help him out a little bit. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. A 10th carry now for Peterson. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, another timeout called by the Vikings now. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. The Saints on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. They stay on the ground. This time it's Camara. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Here's Thomas Morstead now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. <laughs> 51 yards on the punt there. And possession will change here with very little time remaining until halftime. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Final play of the half. Bradford. A hit as he throws there. Incomplete. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. This is fielded at the goal line. Now come the Vikings, they'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Second down, Bradford. Fighting a safety valve here. That's complete. And of the 42-yard line here and brought down there. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. 
That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. They run with Murray, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Hey, 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 hey. Four down, four down, four down. They go with Murray again. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. The Vikings on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Four down, four down. Now Bradford. Screenplay, McKenna. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. First down, here's the run with Cook. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Working out of the gun, Bradford throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Even with the good footwork, he'll be stopped just inside the 35-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and that is going to set up a third and one. The Vikings on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. Again, it's Murray. Down to the 25. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it, I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Peterson gets the handoff from Breeze. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. And some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long.
Here's Breeze to throw. And he'll let it fly in the direction again. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. Here's Thomas Morstead now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Cheryl's to return it. A second juke. <laughs> so a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And out now come the Vikings. And last time the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory. So that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here. Can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They run again with Murray. He's seen a ton of action tonight. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? The Vikings on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. Here it's third and three. From the gun, Bradford. Open man is Thielen is complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Bradford hitting Thielen there for a Viking first. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. Bradford on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? A second down throw for Bradford. And Diggs has it. Stops short of the 25. The nice move couldn't ultimately free him. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. The Vikings on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This time they face a third and two. This is Murray. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This a 43-yard attempt. And Forbath will put this one through. And they are on the board. It's now 9-3. to three. All right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stop defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out.
Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. To return it, Alvin Kamara. And now running right through it. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And he powers his way up past the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. Here's Peterson. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And right, here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. <laughs> It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. down throw for Bradford and he'll be out of bounds up past the 45 he got 29 yards that time well even after all those interceptions he's not deterred still confident to go deep at work there I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply if things go wrong you still act like you're the best player out on the field you still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? Let's phrase this delicately, okay? Might have had a better option instead of throwing the football into double coverage. He was blanketed. I was surprised that he went his direction. Yeah, should have thought maybe about the check down, take the completion, keep moving. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. to throw again. Bradford over the middle here to Rudolph. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. You talk about a combo that works really well. Sam Bradford, short, dart-throwing quarterback, and Kyle Rudolph able to work the seams inside and make those tough catches. Now Rudolph wound up shattering his career high with 83 catches last year, third among NFL tight ends. On third down, Murray. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. I was used to joke with my teammates who carried the ball a lot. When we got in these situations and they were carrying us home, they used to tell them, boy, you guys just look like Paul Bunyan, just growing stronger, bigger, tougher. And all night long, he's carried this team. He has indeed. Everything magnified right now, a huge third down conversion. On first and 10. Bradford going with a screen for Murray. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. 
Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see a breakdown as the passer, I think in this situation, you're either throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? Third and short yardage, Bradford. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Sort of a prototypical Sam Bradford drive here, isn't it? Just kind of short passes, gets another first down there. It goes all the way back to college when he was coming out. The number one thing everyone talked about was his accuracy, how well he placed the football in each and every throw on the money. It set an NFL record 2016 for completion percentage over the season. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and that'll bring up second down. And, of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. Throwing again. Bradford on second and ten. A swing pass caught. And he'll be out of bounds. A good pick up there, a 22. Heady, heady, heady on that one, huh? Getting out of bounds before the two-minute warning. They get an extra timeout, extra opportunity to move the ball downfield. Very smart football. And it looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Now they'll run. Murray. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Latavius Murray taking it in. And if the Vikings can take care of business on the extra point, they will have the lead. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you've pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Who's calling up the defense to make sure they're focused because they still have some work to do? Four bath out to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Back to throw. It's complete. Fleener, right side. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards there as they move the chains. They'll look to throw. He dumps it down to Ingram. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Back to throw. And the tight end has it. It's Flaner. <laughs> Still fighting. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down.
in the red zone this time. First down, here's the run with Peterson. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And another timeout called by the Vikings now. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Second down following the run. They run with Peterson. He's been busy tonight. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. He'll look to throw. And he's got it. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. Stopped him again. They did at the one-yard line. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. He's back to throw, and he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL.